here are a couple of things I did wrong uh, in building my first TVC rocket uh, so you can shortcut your way to your first successful fly. Hopefully you did learn something. Let's start with the mechanical design. I designed this rocket to be 3D printed but didn't keep in mind the thickness of the of the print and I cracked a bunch of these uh, little details. I lost a lot of time trying to make this clipping system for my uh, parachute uh, ejection system. Uh, the same thing here. Uh, and I, I've got it right here, the parachute system. It, now, right now it's cracked off. So when, so when designing uh, your vehicle in CAD, always keep in mind how thick it needs to be and how thickness affects the strength of the uh, part that you're making. Okay, next, uh, you should always keep your uh, center of mass right above or right in the center of your vehicle. So if you take a look at my um, avionics stack, this is uh, a very rudimentary flight computer. But as you can see, it has the 9-volt uh, battery. I still use the 9-volt battery, we'll get to that. In the back, or off to the side. So let me show you why this is a bad idea. For those of you who have played Kerbal Space Program, this probably isn't new to you, but I'll explain it anyway. Okay, let's say this is our rocket, and this is the center of mass, and this is our thrust line. So the thrust line, of course, goes in the TVC mount, and then the uh, center of mass goes in the rocket. Well, ideally, this would be straight on top of the thrust line, but um, as I as in our in my previous rocket where I made this mistake, it was more to the side. So in a normal case where our uh, thrust where our TVC mount is pointing straight down, uh, our uh, center of mass isn't, and so this this will produce because of uh, gravity a force down. And cause the 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 rocket to um, to tilt, so it will it will have the tendency to kind of rotate in this direction. This will be noticed by the gyroscope, and so the TVC mount will um, let's see if I, if I can do this. TVC mount will correct correct and oh no, okay, you get the idea. So the it will try to correct to to point the rocket straight up but as you can see now you have less margin uh, on each side because the uh, the TVC mount is already pointing off its uh, zero position so what we want to do to to minimize that let's uh, actually put this back what we want to do to minimize this is to make sure as much as we can to place the center of mass right on top of the uh, TVC mount so the rocket will point straight up and this won't be necessary uh, in a nominal case. The problem is that, that all the components hang off to one side but the heavy battery is onto the other side so what we can do is kind of shift this more to the right and this may be on top of uh, the computer. And that's what I did in my next uh, rocket. So keep the center of mass uh, in line with the trust line. And then in uh, further along in the spirit of uh, transferring the, uh, the, the battery on top is to make your mass moment of inertia as high as possible because this will make sure your uh, rocket will have less of a tendency to want to rotate. So you all have seen the example of a uh, a skater, an ice skater, uh, moving their arms inwards. So this is basically the same example. If you have a lot of mass on the outside, it will uh, your object or your, or your rocket, your vehicle will have less of a tendency to want to rotate, uh, and this makes uh, this makes possible for your control system to be uh, a bit slower. If you imagine a big rocket like the Saturn V or the Starship, um, you you can imagine it doesn't need to update uh, every ten uh, tenths of tenths of a second, uh, but more like once every second to keep the rocket in the same orientation. But with a small 
a rocket the size of like a feet or uh, 30 centimeters but the rocket will want to rotate a lot faster so you need to detect it a lot faster and you need to correct it a lot faster so when you're using a bigger uh, and larger rockets with a larger moment of inertia especially the control system doesn't need to be as fast as with a smaller rocket and so that's what i did with my next iteration if you can see it here yep this is the uh, the rocket that's hopefully going to fly with a couple of um, changes made so here is a quick comparison between the two rockets uh, this one is uh, the already built one it's smaller it's uh, more compact but also has a lower mass moment of inertia um, and this one will have a new PCB a, pre a, a custom PCB and the uh, battery is here moved to the top of the uh, nose compartment where there is no longer a parachute because we have a different flight profile where there is no time to um, fire a parachute because it will have a low apogee so we don't really have time to deploy a parachute uh, next up we have the flight computer uh, mistakes i already made a video about this one um, uh, it's pretty basic stuff uh, you can watch it but i'll do a quick summary right here we had didn't have enough space i was always cramming sensors and, and wires so give yourself enough space uh, it had no external power regulator um, so you'd need to drive a lot of current to your servos and uh, maybe even a pyro channel but you can't do that through an arduino because it, a, it has a 950 milliamp um, max current rating for the arduino nano at least so uh, take an external uh, power regulator a linear voltage regula regulator or a buck converter you can uh, I, I chose a linear one because it's smaller and easier to use um, the bite and in doing uh, and in using a external power regulator also make sure you use bypass capacitors also on, on very sensitive components like radio um, modules or some stuff like that a bypass capacitor uh, can make a big difference it basically filters voltage spikes for your um, ic's and then i also used a 9 volt battery don't do that it also isn't able to provide enough current uh, for uh, the applications that we want to use. Um, okay, that was it. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.